Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Teachers, education, Old West. Let's revisit that. Congratulations, you are now a teacher. This week marks the seventh anniversary of the Arizona Ghost Riders channel. Mrs. Santee noticed that I've been getting a lot of requests for a video on teachers. Typically, I direct viewers to an early episode on education. However, it's time for an update to this one. Maybe more of an addendum. Hmm, a supplement? Yeah, I'm not sure. This is stupid. No, wait. This is really stupid. It's been established that literacy on the frontier was more evident than Hollywood would have us believe. In fact, in the 1870s, the United States had the highest literacy rates in our country's history. Yeah, the West wasn't settled by knuckle-dragon morons. Candy. One room schoolhouses were the norm, and those could be shared spaces with other businesses in town until an actual building could be funded and built. By the era of westward expansion, most teachers in towns were women. Given that careers for women on the frontier were somewhat scarce, this was still a good one and you made a difference in the world. However, it didn't pay extremely well and offered no retirement. My job is teaching, and your job is learning. The job of the educator was tough, though. In a one-room schoolhouse, you would find varying degrees of knowledge amongst the students. Grade levels were essentially non-existent early on, and kids were sectioned out depending on their levels of comprehension. For example, the ABC Darians, kids learning their ABCs, would be at the front of the class, and the more advanced were towards the back. A, B, C, D, e, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Mrs. Santee, a second grade teacher, deals with some of these challenges today. In one class of 26 students, she can have children reading and writing on kindergarten levels. This requires her to supply different books and manage all these kids with their various strengths. They were often shared in the classroom so that the students would be on the same page. The Victorians used a technique called mental discipline, which was memorizing and reciting facts, definitions, and literature. Teachers would drill them on this until they had it down. With so many folks from other countries settling the West, the subject of American civic values was pressed as well. If you browse the internet, you will find a supposed 1872 document listing the rules for teachers. I found it in a few living history museums. It not only maps out how to do their job, but also how to conduct their private lives. This document has never been authenticated. Some of the ones existing from the era actually are much more mundane and instruct them to simply take attendance and teach lessons, etc, etc, etc. Etc, etc, etc. Hey, do they make those clothes for men? They will, Your Majesty. Ironically, the rules for teachers in the early 20th century are much more restrictive. Notice it doesn't say anything about alcohol consumption. Hmm. In the future, we'll do a dressing the part for the school marm, but I can tell you that it wouldn't have been fancy. In the meantime, do your homework and have it on my desk by Monday. The Gadsden Purchase. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. No, I wasn't talking. Everything is under control. 
no. Yeah, let's see if that came out good. Would you stop tipping? 